What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Sockets with Python tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is basically just building on the last video where uh, we reached the point where we realized uh, things are still a little clunky when we have messages that are bigger than um, the buffer size that we selected, but also how do we maintain this stream of data. So, Because we're finding that the only way that we can finally get our full message is to issue a close, which closes the socket and ends the client. So we'd have to rerun the client. Obviously, it doesn't work. So we did cover everything you need to send and receive data via sockets. So I'm sure lots of people are going to leave us behind and be like, I've got everything I need. Um, but you probably don't <laughs> because it's going to get a lot more complicated than this and or you're going to be missing out on a ton of stuff that sockets have to offer you um, it, with basically any time you want to send things bigger than your buffer size. Uh, so most of the socket tutorials that I've ever seen don't even talk about how you build the message. They It's usually like a chat example. They use a buffer of like 2048 bytes and uh, they don't talk about uh, what happens when you exceed that. <laughs> so anyways, not going to do that to you guys. So how do we actually do it? How do you handle sockets that exceed your buffer, but you don't want to have to close this connection? You want to keep a stream open and all that. Generally, what you're going to do is use a header. Now, there's a million ways that we could do something with a header to, to and basically the header is going to notify your program how long is your message and maybe give some other information about your message. But in this case, we really just want to inform the program, hey, I'm about to send you a message that's, that's 50 characters long, okay? And then once the program receives that first initial header, they're like, okay, I'm going to wait for till I have 50 characters of data. Once I've got that, boom, now I know that message is done. Now I'm going to be waiting for a header again. And then the process repeats. So there's lots of ways that we could build a header. You could make a header have some sort of fixed pattern like begin header, you know, and then maybe end, you know, end message or, you know, who knows. Uh, you could do something like that until, and it would work fine until people learned that that's what you used, and then they would start adding that to their messages uh, just to have a good old time. So you don't want to do that. So what should you or what could you do? And one option is a fixed length header. So you just always have a header that, you know, precedes every new message, and it says how long is that message going to be? And then that way your program knows exactly how much to wait for, and then when it's all done, it relooks for that fixed length header. You know, nobody can really mess with that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So now, how do we do a fixed length header? Well, enter string formatting in Python. Welcome to the Python basics. Okay, so first, let's just do, let's say you got a message, message, and that will be equal to our welcome to the server, right? Um, now what we want to do is get the length of that and issue that in a fixed length header. So you can't just say len message because that might be, you know, if it's under 100, it could be two characters, one character. If it's greater than 100, it'd be three characters. We need it to be a fixed length. So how do we do that? So the way that we're going to do that is first you have to kind of decide, well, what is like the longest <laughs> uh, message we could ever receive? Okay, I'm going to go with 10. So 10 would be, that's one comma, so that's four seven, 10. So if you're thinking you're going to get a message longer than 1 billion characters, do something even bigger. <laughs> okay. But for now, I'm going to go with 10. So what we're going to say is print, and then this will be F. So we're going to use an F string here, and then we're going to say len message, and then, um, and this will be colon less than and then whatever that header length is. In this case, we're gonna say it's 10. So now we'll print that out and you see it says 22, but what you don't see is the extra characters, but if I highlight it, you can see it. It's a fixed length, it's 10 characters. The next thing we could do is we could actually append to it the original message, so we'll do that. And now you can see here, it, it, it precedes the message. Now if we said 20, it would you know proceed with 20 characters. So again, it can be as many as you need. So you can understand that eventually you, you could come up with a number and it's not going to like, you know, require a huge, like your buffer will always be more than enough to handle your header size. <laughs> well, I guess I can't say always, but it, it should be. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> great. So now what we want to do is implement this. Luckily, we've basically done it. So at least server side. So now I'm going to come down here, cut, come down here. Ba, 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 ba. paste that we'll tab that bad boy right on over 
message will equal the header plus the message. Don't forget the plus message bit, otherwise you're gonna have a bad day. Cool. Okay, we're done, server side, easy. Now we have to come to our client. And also, uh, let me change this back to 10. Um, the other thing I'd like to do is implement a constant that is just gonna be header size, and we're gonna set that to 10. Um, and then here, we're gonna pass that with another, what the hell happened? Another set of brackets, cool. I actually did not know this before doing this tutorial because I've, I've like never needed to embed a variable inside of another variable. Um, but yeah, you can just embed more brackets inside more brackets. Fascinating. Okay, save that, come over to our client, and we are ready to implement this on our client. So the first thing I would do is share the header size constant, so paste that in there. And now we are going to continue with a new while loop. So again, while true, full message, we're going to tab this over. Not only will we have full message, but we also want to track new message as a flag. So the very first message we get is definitely the start of a new message. So we're going to set that equal to true. Uh, we'll continue receiving in small amounts, but eight is way too small, so we'll go with 10. So we can at least receive the header, right? Or actually, let's do 16, so we receive a little more than the header. So message, uh, we receive the message. And now what we're going to say is if new message, if that's the case, we need to know how big is this message going to be. So if it is, then we're going to say print, and then we'll say new message length, and that will be... Um, message up to header size. Okay, so that uh, will give us basically the length um, of the message. And then what we're going to say um, is, and it's sort of kind of dawning on me uh, that I, I, I don't think I properly explained like what the heck is actually happening here. <laughs> so, uh, the t so obviously the 10 is how long. This is your alignment, so that means it's going to be left aligned. That's really, it's more like an arrow. So if you want to like right aligned, you would go right. And then I honestly forget what's, there is a center. I think it's like enter, enter or something. I could look it up. Um, I am kind of curious. I, for, I already forgot what it was. Oh no, it's a carrot. So it's a carrot sign. So if you want it to be centered, you would use uh, that. But we don't, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but we're going to use left aligned. But I did, probably should point that out. If you go to the text-based version of the tutorial, I link to the string formatting example for Python. Just, just because I see that that is like so, such a rarely used uh, thing in Python. So anyway, that's how you do it. Okay, so, um, so now we get the message length. The next thing I want to do is actually grab the message length. So we're going to say message length equals int... And then we can actually just parse the int straight from this data. So yay for Python in this case, because that actually contains like some spaces. <laughs> um, but Python figures it out in other languages. Like if you're trying to, if you can, like sockets work the same. It's like, you know, doing stuff with MySQL or something or any SQL. Um, you can take your knowledge and go to other languages. So, but Python is magical in the sense that this is going to work out for us. Uh, in other languages, you would you would need to do like a strip, like a dot strip, to get rid of those extra spaces. Like that, pro this probably wouldn't work in another language, but you could do a dot strip in another language and do it. Anyway, moving on. So we get the message length, and then we'll set new message is false because it's not any longer a new message. So now, new message length, we've got that information. Then every loop, we do want to append to the full message, whatever the new message is. And then if the length of full message minus the header size is equal to the message len that we're expecting, then we have full message received. And then let's print a full message header size colon. So we don't really care about the header. Uh, we just want to see it. Then finally, we're going to say new message equals true and print full message. Great. Now, the other thing I'd like to do is remove the client socket close. We don't need that no more. Uh, new message true. And then also, um, 
we'd like to set full message equal to empty again. So we empty it out. So if we got new messages, um, we would continue. So let's save that, save uh, server. I think we're ready to go. Hopefully we don't have any errors. We're gonna find out soon enough. Server.py, actually I forget. Um, it actually shouldn't matter what version of Python that is. Okay, we already, uh, do I have it running somewhere? Okay, let me, uh, let's up the sockets, uh, or the uh, port rather. So we'll do one, two, three, five. One, two, three, five, come back over here. And in fact, I'm just gonna exit that. Let me just do it again. Nice and clean, server.py. And then we'll do one more, Python client.py. Um, okay, so it tried to convert that message to the int. Message len. So it definitely, Oh, I see what we've done, right. Yeah. So we built the message, but then we never actually converted it. Okay, so convert it. Uh, darn, I can't. So honestly, the only machine, I've done this tutorial, or I tried to film this tutorial on Ubuntu, um, and I had a bunch of issues. I always have issues filming on Ubuntu. So then I tried to film it, or uh, I've got my Mac. I don't wanna film it on a Mac though. So it's just like a laptop and it's annoying to like work on that in film client. So I'm like legit stuck with doing it where I can't break. <laughs> it's very frustrating. Uh, anyway, um, okay. So that worked, Whew, we're done. So now the connection has not been severed. We are still sending and receiving the data and all that. Uh, and we could continue to send and receive data. So just to show that as a quick example, if we wanted to, we could come down here and wow, true. So this is just like a really quick example of sending, um, like for example, we could import time. Uh, while true, uh, what we're gonna do is just issue a time.sleep3, and then let's do copy, paste, tab that over, tab this over, uh, the message will be, um, whoops, F. Uh, it just doesn't matter. Time to time. Uh, the time is. Okay, whatever. Um, so we send the time. Um, then we get the header size message. And then all we want to do is send that message. So copy this, paste that, save that. And I believe we should be all set. If not, oh, we were, we're gonna find out really quick, but this is a great way for me to test that what I've said is true. Python uh, server.py. Really wish I didn't have to do this every time. Really wish I could just break it. Welcome to the server. And then hopefully in three seconds, we'll see the time. Congratulations, we got it. Uh, continue, continue, continue. Okay, so every three seconds, we'll get this new message of how long the time is. Hopefully one of these would be shorter. Sometimes the time will like round itself, but it doesn't appear to be occurring. But anyway, you get the idea. Um, obviously you wouldn't have to send a time. This could be a stream of any information, sensor data or uh, chat data or, you know, server log information, who knows? It could be anything. Yeah, so this one was actually shorter. So anyways, you can see it's working. Variable length, the buffer's working. Everything's great. We're having a great day. Um, I think I just have one more thing I wanna show you guys and I think I'll do that in the next tutorial. And that is gonna be, how do we send, like messages like this are cool, like sh sending strings is awesome and you could use at least like JSON or something like that. Um, but in the next tutorial, I'd like to show you guys how to send Python objects. So how, like, let's say you've got an array or a dictionary and you didn't want to use JSON or anything. Everything in Python is an object. So basically any data structure. So including like machine learning models or anything doing this in Python is really easy. So I want to show you guys in the next video, um, exactly how to do that. Uh, but before that quick shout out to my most recent channel members, Rajnish Kumar, <laughs> Cheeky Buns 13, Frank Lloyd Jr., Payman Sayadi, and Mohammed Almore. Thank you guys very much for your support. You guys are awesome. Um, okay, I will see you guys in another video.